You know, there's something I learned a long time ago, and it's huge, 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 huge. I learned that quitters never win, and winners never quit. Are you a winner, or are you a quitter? Hi there, Neil here, the Twisted Light Worker. So true, winners never quit. And the, also true, the quitters never win. We are at a very crucial time in humanity's growth and enlightenment and changes. The changes that are taking place on planet Earth right now are ineffable, totally ineffable. Weeds are being pulled. By that, what I mean is all of the corruption and the evil that's been taking place on the planet for centuries is now being exposed and pulled. Some of it's visible right out in the open. Some of it's behind the scenes. And in the process, we are now presented with an amazing task of creating a new world, one that we all participate in, and one that we all excel in. We're going to learn to give up the struggle to survive and learn to love life and love living. And in this process, there's gonna be all kinds of interesting things happen. People will give up on on themselves and they'll give up on systems around them rather than rolling up their sleeves and uh, participating in making the proper changes to make the world a better place. All these groups, there's so many groups getting started. There's groups in common law, there's groups in, in gardening, there's groups in community efforts to uh, assist in helping everybody in the community. And as always, there's a bunch of people that have joined those groups that are knife and forkers. All they do is milk what's going on. They come for the, the dinner, so to speak. I call them knife and forkers. Others are actually doing all the work. And it's very fascinating because the ones doing the work Every once in a while, they feel like, what's the use? They throw the towel in, they throw their arms up, and they just want to uh, walk away from it all. I don't blame them, but there's another side to that coin. You see, we have to rest if we must, absolutely. Sometimes we need to step back and just uh, relieve ourselves of those responsibilities while we recharge our batteries. There's a big difference between recharging your battery and quitting. You may find that the group that you're in no longer serves your best and highest interest and you're make, it may not make the most use out of your talents and what you have to offer. In those times, moving on to something else is not quitting. It's moving on to something else. That's a big difference. It's fun this whole process that we're in right now, transforming the globe, pulling the weeds of corruption, getting rid of them. First, we have to expose them. Then we have to be willing to roll up our sleeves and get rid of the weeds. I made a whole video about pulling the weeds. I'll leave the link down below. But when we experience conflict in the groups that we get going to make a difference, when we experience conflict, we have to realize that it, there's another way of looking at it. It's not something that causes you enough uh, harm or frustration to just walk away from. It's just a conflict. And conflicts, huh. let's hear what Mark Cloudfoot Gershon has to say, a tall tech leader that I follow. says, to the warrior, conflict is always imagined, but it's the opposition that is real. Opposition is dealt with easier than conflict. 
conflict seeks to embroil you in their issue by a mental or emotional identification. If you have no identification with the conflict, the conflict doesn't exist. Only the opposition exists, and the opposition is easily manipulated by energetic means. By becoming the knowing effect, you see the cause. See, that's a very powerful, powerful statement. We reframe the difficulties and the conflicts that we have and realize that they're nothing more than an opposition to what we thought things should be like. I made emphasis on we thought for a reason. You see, we have a tendency to take things personal when we shouldn't. Nothing should be taken personal because we're all in this boat together. We're all on this planet Earth, no matter what shape it's in. <laughs> no matter what shape it's in, we're all on planet Earth. And we all have aspects of ourselves that we can contribute to making a better world to help us. Help us give up the struggle to survive and learn to love life and love living. And through this process of change, there's going to be many groups that start. Some of them are going to fall completely. Some of them are going to, all the members are going to change. But the group will continue on because the new blood will take it in a little bit different way. Why? Because, you see, when we take things personal, we get emotionally trapped. We become drama addicted. <laughs> And so many people find themselves addicted to drama. I see it so much. It's it mind-blowing how addicted to drama people get. They take everything away too personal. Nothing in this world is considered to be taking personal. The reason being is, is we're all on this energetic path to making enlightenment happen on the planet from the North Pole to the South Pole. The corruption is being exposed. Good. Keep exposing it. And if you find something locally that's brand new, expose that too. But don't rehash stuff that's been exposed a billion times. Go pull the weed. Go pull the weed. See, conflict definitely is in the imagination. It's the opposition. The weed in the garden is not a conflict. It's just an opposition to harvesting the garden of your dreams the produce that you want to eat or the flowers that you want to put in a pretty bouquet on your on your coffee table the opposition is real all you do is pull the weed it's not that difficult we have to do that personally within our own soul we have to do that personally in our own soul we're all on this path of spiritual growth beyond what the majority of people have any clue about this is the time of the Great Awakening. John 14, 10 through 12. John 14, 10 through 12 says it all. Says it all. Look it up. Who are the ones coming to do more? Well, it's the ones who are willing to look at conflict as nothing but an opposition and they won't take the challenges of this whole process personally. They won't get emotionally trapped. See, we have to wear be aware of what we're on top of. Reminds me of a story. A friend of mine was down in Florida escaping the winter. We have cold winters up here in Canada. And the hotel that they booked in, they planned on spending the whole vacation in the pool, by the pool. And wouldn't you know it, the pool was closed when they got there. So they decided they would look for another hotel and there was a number of conventions going on and they couldn't find another hotel. So with the situation as it was, they could look at that as being a conflict, but it was really just an opposition of making their holiday what they wanted it to be. So the lady, she went up on the rooftop and she got excited because she realized that she could get up onto the roof and no other buildings were taller than the one that they were on. And so she quickly went back to the room, brought her towel and, and uh, 
laid down on the smoothest part of the roof that she could find. And she was laying there totally naked. And she says, this is even better than the pool because we can't be naked. I won't even have tan lines. I'll come back to Canada and everybody will really be surprised. No tan lines and I had a great time. A little while later though, as she was laying there, the manager of the hotel come running up and said, lady, lady, what are you doing? So she grabbed her towel and covered up. She says, I just come from Canada and the pool's closed. I couldn't get another hotel. So I wanted to soak up some rays. And the manager of the hotel looked at her and says, but lady, you don't realize you're laying face down in the dining room skylight. <laughs> we have to be aware of what we're on top of. We have to be aware of the weeds that need to be pulled. We have to be aware of the disagreements that we're going to have in groups that are doing things, whether it be common law or gardening or whatever community project you get involved in to make a change. You're going to find that somewhere there's going to be opposition to your perspective of what you think the group should be. And you may feel like you're the only one doing all the work. Well, step back, step back and just take a rest because there's always going to be the ones that do the most work. And eventually others will watch and they may not participate the way you want them to in the group, but they will be learning by watching your example, how they may be able to make a change somewhere else. So you never, ever, ever underestimate the power of planting a seed. So always look at conflicts as nothing more than an opposition to your perception of what you think should be happening. That's it. Don't take it personal. Don't get emotionally caught up in it. And if you find yourself in those situations, by all means, take a breather, take a rest, step back. Let somebody else grab the bull by the horns for a while in that particular group or function. And if you've outlived your personal ability to contribute and you see that you can be of more value somewhere else, then quietly thank the group for the time that you've been able to share and move on to the next group. These are amazing times. The whole world is going to be flipped up right side up because it's been upside down for too long. It's been upside down for far too long. So I want you to think about something that this is all, this whole video is about. Don't quit. When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. So don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. You see, as we step into the new era, it won't be the globalist new world order. No, it's in our hands to create an orderly new world. It's in our hands to create an orderly new world. I made a whole bit video on that. I call it thrivalism and it connects with Nisera Gassera years ago. In 2017, I made some videos on the Call of My Moon Talks. I'll leave the link to those in the, in the description below. And it was all about how the shift is, is going to be taking in place and we're flipping the monetary system right side up because, like I said, everything's been upside down.
So when we flip it right side up again, all the power will be once again in our hands. So when the power comes back into our hands, we have to realize that we're going to have difficulties. We're going to have challenges. We'll never have any conflicts, but we will have opposition to the way we think it should be. So separate yourself from the, from the, the drudgery that you have made believe that's happening. No, there is no drudgery. What there is, though, is emotional attachments to what you think should happen. And when that happens, it is all falls on your shoulders to pay attention to what's really happening and realize that you may well be the problem, but opposition may require you to step back and recharge your batteries, take another look, ponder, contemplate, and then roll your sleeves up again and boogie. Roll your sleeves up again and boogie. So this whole thing is about getting rid of the wimp in the warrior spirit. It's standing in your power. It's all about taking the wimp out of the warrior path. There is no room for wimpy new agey concepts. Sentiments and sentimentality are nice for those on other paths, but it really gets you nowhere. It gets you nowhere. So when you see life and see these changes that we're going through is nothing more than a challenge. It's just a challenge. It makes it easy not to take things personal. It makes it easy to be the only one in the group that's doing the most of the work. You don't care. Why? Because you're making progress. You're watching things unfold. Other people are paying attention. They're learning from you. They may not roll up the sleeves and do what you think they should in this particular group, but you can be rest assured, somewhere in their subconscious watching you, they are learning because we all learn from each other. We all have that spark of the divine in each inside in each and every one of our cells that spark of divine is i made a whole series of videos on standing in your power what does that really mean standing in your power and, and putting on the suit of armor suit of armor what is god's suit of armor that is standing in your power and getting rid of the wimp getting rid of the wimp in the warrior spirit that's inside you so, don't quit. Take a rest if you must. And if you feel that there's another program or another group that would better serve your skills, part company with the, the project that you may be rolling your sleeves up on currently. If it's not working out and if it doesn't feel right in your heart, that just means that you got to be guided to something that's more suited for your talents and your skills and your abilities. As we get together in unity, this whole world will be transformed into something miraculous, way beyond the beauty that we've ever been able to imagine before. The road ahead has some bumps. There's still weeds that need to be exposed. And there's a bunch of weeds that are already exposed that need to be pulled. There's challenges to this whole process. But thrivalism, Nisera Gesera, ha, one day soon, mankind will thrive. If it's not this generation, it doesn't matter. We're doing it for the kids. We're doing it for future generations. I don't believe it's gonna take that long. By 2030, we're already going to be seeing all kinds of evidence that mankind is learning to give up the struggle to survive and learning to love life and love living. That's thrivalism. <laughs> That's thrivalism. So I hope you take some message of, out of this talk and, and apply it to yourself. Don't quit. 
rest if you must. And if you like this video, hit the like button, join my channel, and share it. Share it around. Share it to the people who are in your group that are planning on quitting and being disgruntled. Maybe they'll see something in it for themselves. These are so beautiful times, such beautiful times, such, such beautiful times because we are awakening. We are realizing that we all have that divinity within. Each and every single human being from the North Pole to the South Pole has that spark of the divine inside each and every one of their cells. <laughs> it's powerful. These are beautiful times. And in this beauty, uh, I thank the ones who have bought me coffee. I have a buy me a coffee link in the, in the description below. And in the short term, we all can roll up our sleeves. We all can take a deep breath and rest if we must. And in that rest, find that peace profound that's inside you and share it because that is powerful. So I wish for each and every one of you peace profound. I wish for you peace profound. <laughs>